This is IBM Museum. I just wanted to do a quick video as I'm kind of running around. I'm trying to come up with those uh, diskette images for the NCR system to at least go through and work with one of those as promised. Open the system up, replace that Dallas module, and then run the configuration. And I'm having a very hard time. I'll, I'll explain the details when I come to that video later on. But I did want to provide the update um, that I'm I'm going to try and get that done tonight as well. The uh, I, I wanted to show with this short video because I took down those systems and I thought if I'm having so much trouble with doing a video on that, I can move on to another video. Um but I'm not really set up for that one as well, but it's worthwhile just showing some of the other angles I'm working on, kind of the return to IBM or, or some of the things or um, connections back to some of the prior videos that I did um, even rather recently to, um, to, to just show that. And those videos like this will be coming out, the, the content that I'm uh, ramping up for here um, will also come out very soon. And so let me get off screen, get turned around and kind of quickly go over that process and then work on uh, getting those diskette images made for the NCR system. Um, and I can, um, as this video goes through, is uploaded and, and watched, uh, I could at least get all that stuff ready for that second video. Okay, so this is the PS2 MOL60 that I've um, gone through and worked with on earlier regard. It's got that uh, ESDI adapter in there that, uh, you know, working on getting a, a utility written that, that checks the microcode for that barely visible EEPROM up there. But... I wanted to show that, um, and we're also talking about, I've got kind of the system fired up and I'll, I'll undoubtedly be doing this as I go through and work with that NCR video later. I'll be going through and trying to, uh, to uh, pull out this PLCC EEPROM and read it, my, uh, dump the contents that's on here, even though it's likely that that has already been done. Um, I was pointed out uh, or shown a link today to where that image exists, but I'm probably still going to go through and run it on my own because there may be different uh, versions, and I'm not sure of the version that's up, um, what it is, if it's the same version as what I have on my board. But this is work with uh, someone is is trying to get alternate video going on his MOL60 just for the thought of um, higher performance VGA. The, the planar video of the MOL60 being that base VGA with the 256 uh, kilobyte of VRAM is just not adequate for the purposes that he's trying to do. And so he's trying to go through with, with some adapters that are able to be plugged in there and this is one of the adapters he's uh, he's tried to do, um, and it it might be a good candidate otherwise because it's got uh, that ROM extension uh, typically goes through and it can tell the the system, hey, I'm the primary video, um, something of that nature, and turn off some of the that other. Um, planar video in a lot of instances is, is how it can work. There can, um, and, um, but that's the kind of the reason for looking at that code and seeing if that may need to be adapted for actually an entirely different reason. And that is that the, um, I've made the modification to this board after Peter went. Um, on the comp.sys.ibm.ps2.hardware news group, and I'll link into that group. That's a good uh, place to get, you know, research information, 
as far as some of these things that have been done. It's uh, not as involved as getting onto uh, Facebook for some of the people that have questions about that. So it's it's something that they're easily able to, um, as an as another form area online that is focused towards exclusively on IBM PS2s by the nature of the title. And um, as I say, I'll link that news group just so access to the information. But Peter went went through, and uh, years ago when he had one of these adapters, he went he soldered on more VRAM chips onto the adapter. And these are double-decked, as I've done in this instance, to the uh, original one megabyte of VRAM that was that populates here on the board, uh, just because the Cirrus Logic chip, that's the video controller here, um, is able to also run an additional megabyte of, of VRAM, so with a full capacity of two megabyte of VRAM. And there's constraints on that as far as like Windows drivers and things like that, but... Um, it was a good enough thing that once Peter gave the instructions, I was willing to try it. And it's just not very visible once you do this upgrade of whether it has gone to a, into effect or not. And for me, the adapter still functions, but I've got to get in there and uh, do a little bit of utilities as well just to kind of see if, um, if I can, if the adapter is aware that it has that two megabyte of VRAM. Now I'm doing that. I was another thing that was delaying me is I was last few days. I was looking around for this book. I had misplaced it, and as you can see, over time I've gone through and it's been a very heavily used reference um, for me. Split. It's got all the post-it notes um, that it's at the top, and. Um, and I've gone through and undoubtedly I've made the same corrections to this as I have for the um, undocumented PC book that I had out otherwise and I gave reference to. This is another very good reference. It's a related part of the series. Um, and it does exist in some form online. This Ralph Brown, um, one of the authors of the book um there's the rbil ralph brown Inter interrupt list as it's known online that takes this book and it puts an electronic web page format typically older web page design even for the amount of time that's been online um but you can find it online to me there's not any replacement for having a book i can lay my hands on and kind of study and leave through otherwise rather than going through an, an online study. And I'm actually going to pull this back for the moment. I'll go through and I'll read the ISBN number of it just to make people aware. And this is the second edition. It was, it's copyrighted 1994 by Ralph Brown and Jim Kyle. And it's ISBN 0-201. Dash six two four eight five dash zero, and so that's a good reference for that book. Moving on on the on the video adapter here, and this is actually viewed as the server SVGA adapter. This adapter is present in a lot of the server and uh, microchannel systems as a, a base video. And this chip is also used elsewhere among the IBM line for that for that server level as well. And I talked about the limitations. One one thing is the Windows NT driver for this board is only up to one megabyte of VRAM. The driver does not does not have the ability to use two megabyte of VRAM. And so that's kind of the limitation on the Windows NT side. The Windows 9, what's referred to as the Windows 9X drivers, are able to utilize that 2 megabyte of, of VRAM. 
And this book, I mean, primarily what I was looking for was the, uh, it lists the interrupt calls that I can go through and write a little utility that makes the adapter identify how much VRAM it has on it. Also, there's uh, software calls that uh, I could take advantage of and have it identify the uh, which chipset it is of the Cirrus Logic uh, series, even though I can read the, the label and really know what that is. Now, this chip was, as I say, used in other designs from IBM, notably the IBM PC Server 720 has this chip as on the planer as, as base video. And the Server 720, if I ever get to the point where I want to get my exercise and set it up here on the bench, the bench will probably collapse under the weight. Um, good 70 some odd pounds probably of, of hardware. Uh, but it's a big, big iron, um, so to speak, uh, for that PC level that it's microchannel plus PCI mixed bus. And it has it's a multiprocessor design up to uh, six CPUs, if you have an, an operating system that can use that many, and um, quite a bit of memory. I think it goes up to like a gigabyte of memory. I'll have to look on um, special adapters. And it's a very unique system. Uh, we'll eventually get to look inside one, like I say, when I want to get my exercise and all that. But one of the notable things is... With Peter and being on on SIF, one he went through and noticed that this adapter has uh, goes through and the video flickers slightly, and so he pulled out an oscilloscope and discovered that a capacitor was miswired on this adapter, and uh, so he uh, presented it to the news group. We went through and kind of collaborated. And we figured that the uh, IBM had the schematic backwards. They had the capacitor backwards in the circuit. Once a replacement capacitor was put in, uh, I mean, if you desolder the original capacitor, it's just as well to solder in a capacitor that you know is functional, has not been damaged by, by being put in a circuit backwards. But once that capacitor is replaced and a very broad amount of values could be used to put that capacitor in, um, it fixed that flicker problem. And this is the modified board as well that I've, that I've desoldered the original capacitor and soldered in this electrolytic replacement. So if anyone was not even aware, that's why I, I try and announce the, the news group for that knowledge base because Somebody could go through and not be aware that that knowledge is online, have one of these adapters and see that flicker and not know the resource that this was fixed a matter of, of decades, you know, uh, probably at least a decade, probably about a decade and a half ago when that was when that was discovered and fixed. And it is also miswired on the server 720 design. And on the server 720, it's not as easy because it's on the back of the planer and um, not in the exposed side. And so that means basically disassembling your whole server 720 just to get at that capacitor to um, wire in a replacement. But it's worth mentioning in this case, as I say, that that knowledge base that we went through as well. And I had a spare 720 planer. I was able to... Uh, to uh, pull out and look and verify that that capacitor was miswired on that as well. Uh, just that IBM evidently gained the, uh, the circuit design. Somebody mixed that capacitor around and that crept into the boards that they produced. Induced an error. IBM was never aware of that on their own. But, you know, it was... Uh, it was uh, discovered by the hobbyist out there, and that's why I want to link in the, uh, the, uh, that online resource of the, the news group. Now, this other adapter, um, and this is called the, uh, kind of confusingly, the SVGA slash A adapter. And this has a different 
Texas Instruments chipset on it, and it has 512 KB of VRAM. And so the one of the discoveries within the last year on it has been that even though the chip number is different here, there is the same equivalent chip on that Model 25 SX, the PS1 Pro 2123 planner that we looked at the other day with the um, unboxing video, the uh, planner of what we've looked at for the 8556 and 8557 rather recently. Uh, we haven't looked at the 35SX and 40SX planers that also have an older version of this chip. But it was discovered with that link between the chips that those planer designs of using, um, of, of having an additional amount of VRAM on, on those planers could make that uh, those implementations a lot more functional. So the 25SX, as we saw in that last video, it has the full 512 KB of VRAM. The PS1 Pro 2123 planer that was I unboxed only had the 256 KB VRAM and it had sockets for two the two additional chips. Uh, I briefly showed when I went over the 8556 and 8557 planers that they also had those sockets for the additional VRAM. In one case, um, one of the planners I had, it had the VRAM installed, and the other one it didn't. At least those had sockets. All those mentioned designs so far had sockets. On the 35SX and 40SX, it's not that lucky. They just have solder pads. They do not have uh, sockets. I've gone through and actually um, soldered in sockets on one of my uh, units for that and I'll show a little bit more in later videos on that angle and discuss the 512 KB VRAM upgrade and what driver and everything it needs in a later video as well. That's why I do these um, intermediate videos to kind of show of the angles I'm working on or uh, going off on uh, topics in a particular area of what I plan to cover at some later point as well. Now these adapters, I mean, going on to the Mall 60, like this, um, you know, they have their areas that there's going to be problems. The Mall 60 has that base VGA um, that uh, the person I'm referring to wants to go through and have a little bit better video. And these adapters are used to, with this base video extension, to, to be the primary video of the system. Now, the MAL60 does not have an instance where you can plug in a base video adapter into the system uh, that will take over control of, of being the, the primary video board. It does have the auxiliary video extension, but the auxiliary video extension, that's a way to get basically that video content out of the planer into an adapter that's that that needs to use it for functionality like the 8514 a adapter um, and that's not the direction that this individual is going in he wants a, a faster video not the in a sense in some form better video that's slower of the 8514 a design so we're gonna have to work on angles in that BIOS examination of um, seeing whether the, we can get and make code that goes through there and uh, deactivates that primary video to, to have this adapter as, uh, as supplying that, that base video that's needed. And um, this is a little bit different where it doesn't have any ROM BIOS extension for um, for running the board, but it has a VESA driver. And we've seen that on the videos of the, tw the 25SX and um, of going through and um, uh, where we've seen that driver load on the screen as I've, as I've gone through 
um, to show that. And um, so this adapter is probably just not as likely a candidate because that that VESA driver supplies the uh, the modes to the system of of what uh, this display adapter is able to to show for the for the different mode modes. Uh, and um, it's not going to be like having that BIOS ROM extension, maybe. So we're just checking to see if these adapters may be able to go into an older system, um, one that may be limited by the fact that uh, it's got a 286 CPU. I mean, of course, that can be upgraded. But a lot of times you get into some of these designs that it may be running uh, the VESA driver or the code this adapter may be expecting a 386 level CPU of running the system um, and that's not an issue for the individual he's got actually a, a I believe a 46 uh, SLC2 CPU board that's rather nice for these systems but he's just looking at upgrading that video side as well so that turned into a lot of content there for just a general um, um, intermediate video or uh, explainer of some of the problems I was experiencing uh, and, uh, and moving on to other content. But I'm going to get back on the screen here just to be able to wrap things up. And um, I'll, uh, as this video goes through and uploads, I'll be running and seeing if I can get those uh, diskette images made, and we will have a second video uh, for the day as well. I've been really trying to, uh, to stick to about a video per day. Uh, it's an intense schedule uh, at the change of the new year, and of course I've had other things I've had to do, other even a trip I had to do um, that interrupted that. But... Here lately, it's been actually just one thing after another, interrupting that schedule and inter interrupting me uh, from doing this. So hopefully I can kind of stick to this schedule, but it's just making people aware of some of the things that come up uh, uh, for me like, like that that are interrupting things. If you do like this just very odd content, this update, by all means, go ahead and click on that like button. But that is all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.